Welcome to Portrait. Right now we're in Bergamo, in the Officina Italiana Design Studio, a studio that's been designing for the Riva brand, a true legend in the contemporary nautical world for over 20 years now. They have designed yachts, cars and other things, and they have won many international prizes. Today, the boat show is talking style with Sergio Beretta and Mario Michelli, two of the most influential figures in the world of international yacht design. Officina Italiana Design nasce nel 1994. Officina Italiana Design started in 1994, essentially when I met Mauro, and we realized how much we had in common, interest-wise, particularly art, design, and the desire to work for ourselves. That's when we decided to join forces and start up our own design studio. I started out very simply in the small town I was born in, working out of my father's big shed, where not long before there'd been chickens running around. So that's where we started off and discovered our love for contemporary art, which then became a big part of the studio. If I have to think about what I love, it's not just the creativity process in making boats, or in the boats that other people make, or boats in general. It's the modern art, the contemporary art, which somehow is always the first step in what is eventually integral to the design. Officina Italiana Design si è evoluta nel tempo lentamente, direi, passo per passo. Officina Italiana Design has evolved over time, slowly, step by step. It's been 20 years of work, which perhaps even we haven't even noticed that now. The structure has become more complex, articulated. The studio has changed. It's evolved, as we have. Sergio has been fundamental to the growth. Fundamental because he's the one who defends the officina, the work that we do, the work that I do with the studio guys. Because other than Sergio and I, what really makes officina italiana is the team. The guys that ask to work for us definitely have to have a certain talent that can be cultivated. They need to have a certain dose of sympathy. We're a group. We like to work. We enjoy ourselves every day. We want to keep doing it with enthusiasm as well as being humble. In this world of yachting, it's easy to lose touch with reality. We don't want this to happen to us, so we keep our heads down and we work every day. Riva is Riva, a legend in the nautical world from the point of design and style. Created in 1842, Riva has always known how to keep evolving, maintaining its unique identity, remaining faithful to itself, but investing in style and technological innovation, creating conditions for a long-lasting success story. Design for Riva. All in all, designing for Riva isn't that complicated for us because we've been doing it for 20 years. We've been working for them for a long time, so we've got over the fear of designing for such an important brand. In truth, really, the more we design for Riva, the more we realize how difficult it is. The first years, I did it sort of naively, but lately the market has been difficult, as we all know, so it weighs a little more heavily. But, well, we're quite optimistic so we don't let it affect us too much. If you get worried about the brand you're working for, you won't manage to do anything. You aren't going to get very far if you're frightened by a boat like Aquarama. It's the most famous boat in the boating world, so the most important thing is to stay calm and do our best. Knowing the brand as well means you can worry less about its history too, otherwise you'd never be able to do anything. 
The Riva series is wide-ranging, both by dimension and typology, with yachts made in fiberglass that span from 8 to 38 metres, including opens, coupes and flying bridges. The new Riva Super Yachts division has a dedicated team working in the Ferretti Group in Ancona, which plans, develops and builds 50 to 90 metre long mega yachts. All Reva boats, from the 27-foot Iseo to the Superlight Mega Yachts, are gorgeous with such unmistakable detail, the result of a very long work history and the most glorious Italian artisan tradition, all mixed together nicely with the most advanced technology, culture and style, whether that is the knowledgeable use of precious woods, mahogany or knot holes in the infinite choice of colours and markings. Well, being Italian counts for a lot. As a nation, we are full of beautiful things. History, art, cooking, design, etc. I hope that this moment of austerity we're going through isn't infusing a feeling of inertia. I don't think so, because Italy has a gut instinct. It's in its DNA, this ability to pull something out when there's a crisis. Italy always manages to create something interesting, turn a negative into a plus. The Sarnico boatyard started up in 1842 in the heart of Francia Quarter, on Lake Isio, is the driving force of the whole Riva story, the place where it all started. Wonderful, legendary wooden boats and yachts from 27 to 68 feet. The boatyard is 36,000 square metres in total, 17,000 of which are covered. It boasts 10 docks, two flagged cranes, four painting cabins and a 50-ton bridge crane. This is the testing pool of the Cantieri Riva in Sarnico, on the banks of the Riva Mare, worthy descendant of the Aqua Riva Super and Aqua Mara, picking up the historic fascination of these older models and linking them to the best innovations in technology. At 11, 88 metres long and 3 metres 50 wide, it's got two Volvo twin shank 400 horsepower engines that allow it to get up to a speed of 40 knots. In order to make this jewel a reality, it's still not finished by the way. Specialised mastery and passionate craftsmanship is needed, which is able to bring to life this meticulous planning work done by Officina Italiana Design. The task of the designers, in fact, doesn't end in the studio, but carries on across the production line, looking after the standards so they are good enough to be part of the Riva brand. Well, obviously the boats start off as an initial idea from the boatyard, from a working group that gives you a sort of briefing, and a discussion, let's say, that comes to life from the brand. But then we get involved when we start to trace the first simple shapes of the boat and try to put together some of the boatyard's requests. Then we get to the boatyard with the prototype of the boat. We don't normally follow the production line except for the prototype, which we follow from start to finish of boat number one. It's a complex process which still amazes me, and amazes me that we managed to create it at all. Continuity and innovation are a big challenge. Riva has a great tradition that needs to be respected, and so you need in some way to work following the tradition. Continuity in the world of Riva, for me, means pulite, lines morbid, 
What's continuity in the Riva world? Well, I think that means clean and fluid lines, lines created to last the test of time, that are like a form of respect, not just for the brand, but also the type of respect for the owners of our boats, who need instruments that last from an aesthetic point of view, as well as a functional one. The ISEO is an entry level in the Riva series, a 27-foot runabout that keeps elegance and transportability as its two major strengths. In practice, there are two points that distinguish this boat, along with a lot of details that we've looked over and even proposed on bigger boats. If we say that simplicity of form is the most distinctive point, well, it's enriched with certain styles that are, that practically come from the experience and knowledge of the brand. There are undoubtedly Riva styles that invoke memories of the past, the wood, the steel and leather. But there are things we want to carry on through to the future. There are an element of continuity and tradition. And there are innovative elements too, that look to the contemporary. A great brand still has to keep up with the times. So for example, I think of double curved glass, typical of the planks and reaver deck houses. And remember the use of color as a design element, not just as a nice idea for the hull. For example, just recently, we've bought a whole series of asymmetric elements on board the reaver boats that I personally find very innovative. Fondamentalmente credo nella specializzazione, quindi la nostra storia è, è nella nautica, la nostra esperienza è nella nautica, quindi le nostre energie sono fondamentalmente... Basically I believe in specialization, our history is nautical, our experience is nautical, and so our energies have basically been channeled into the nautical field. The strange thing over the years, however, has been that we've also happily dedicated ourselves to certain projects which go hand in hand with the nautical design business. They're the things we've been passionate about, but haven't been able to develop, which is because Reva's development programs are pretty intense and we're all focused on them. I personally don't have any desire to do anything else, because deep down I'm actually not a great fan of design. Well, what I mean is that I see design as a profession, not a pastime. And for reasons already highlighted by Sergio, the office's name is Officina, meaning artisan. I personally see the boat like a sculpture, something that Gianni Zucon, a great architect, a great nautical designer, for example, reproaches me. I truly see a boat like a sort of equilibrium, creating a form. So to me, it's more like it's the thought of art and going into specifics, making a new product even. Seems a little high and mighty. There are other people who do it very well. I really appreciate what the others do. I don't want to do it. Maybe it's due to mental laziness, but I really don't want to deal with anything that isn't a boat. Sergio Beretta and Mauro Micheli from Officina Italiana Design have explained how an idea is created and how the planning of the most prestigious yachts is developed. The boat show and portrait once again have taken you behind the scenes to reveal the nautical world like you've never seen it before.
C'è chi dice che il lusso è l'assenza di volgarità. I believe everyone has their own idea of luxury. I don't believe there's a unique concept of luxury all over the world. There's those who say that luxury is the absence of vulgarity, and on this I have to say I quite agree. Some boats search out the limelight. They're searching for special effects that, I think, don't last that long. They lose a bit of the essence of yachting, which is fundamentally to look at the world from another perspective, but moreover live in intimate personal spaces in a comfortable environment, in touch with nature, with our loved ones. Paradoxically, we're talking leisure time, basically because if you don't have time to experience the boat, well, let's say, imagine you have the most luxurious object in the world, but if you don't have time to use it, what's the point of having such a big toy? Luxury can be simple. You don't need to add all the chaos that we see in the nautical world of today. If we look at our boats, the last one we did, for example, the River Mare, was made with only two signs and the utmost in great quality. Il tempo credo che in realtà sia la, il maggior e il miglior lusso. Time, I believe, is the major and best luxury that one can be allowed to have in these times of madness. So, well, time. <laughs>